Good morning uh, or good afternoon, wherever you may be, uh, East Coast, West Coast. My name is Andy Deal. I'm your host today. And uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, class, which uh, Daniel Nadeau, one of our excellent application engineer, part of our technical team based out of Pennsylvania, um, will be walking through um, Sim Center 3D, which used to be called NXCAE, Advanced Simulation. Um, but before I pass the presentation over to Daniel, I do want to remind the audience that at any time if you have questions, please type it into your chat panel and we will address your question in the Q&A portion of the webcast. Um, and also before you lock off the webcast, or I'm sorry, after you lock off the webcast, there'll be a survey to pop up. It's a very short five question survey, you about a minute to do. Please take time to fill that out. It helps us a lot in terms of um, understanding uh, whether or not the, the content was uh, was good from your perspective and, and it helps us, you know, um, to work on our end to make sure that, that we deliver quality and, and, uh, and good content for you. So uh, with that, uh, I will pass the presentation over to Daniel. Daniel, all yours. Thank you for the introduction. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be giving an overview of SimCenter 3D. So SimCenter 3D is the, I'll say, replacement for NXCAE. It's just a rebranded name uh, for NXCAE Advanced Simulation. So just get my slideshow here. So here a little bit about myself. My name is Dan Nato. I'm an application engineer. I specialize in FEMAP, NXCAE, NXCAD, and NXNASTRAN. So today we're going to be talking about NXCAE or SimCenter. So that's the agenda. So what, what is SimCenter 3D? And then I'm going to go through two demo models. One's going to be a solid model and one's going to be a mid-service model. And hopefully through this presentation I'll be able to show you some tips and tricks and some uh, uses in NXCAE. So here's the, the new SimCenter portfolio. Today we're going to be talking about the 3D CFDs portion of the analysis, and we're going to be primarily focused on the structural analysis. Now, one thing with SimCenter 3D is that now you see that there's a section for testing, so that would be physical testing, and there's 1D simulation as well. So that is the full SimCenter portfolio, and we're going to spend our time talking about the 3D in our uh, webinar today. So here's just the uh, overview of uh, the 3D CFD simulation, we're going to be using NXNASTRAN as our solver to solve our structural analysis. So here's just the uh, basic file structure for NXCAE or SimCenter. So you have a master part, which would be your CAD model, which would be, you know, the part that is used in CAD to, you know, design, maybe do CAM work later. Uh, so this is the master part that would be in your top level assembly. So us in our FEA world, we're going to take an idealized part. So our idealized part, we're going to remove rounds, fillets, blends, things like that. So we're going to do some model defeaturing with that. And then we're going to create a finite element model, so a FEM part, which controls uh, properties, materials, things like that. And then we're going to create a simulation part. So at the sim level is where we apply our boundary conditions and where we would solve our model. So that's the basic file structure for SimCenter. So here is the idealized part. So this is one of the nice things with using NXCAE is that we can use this idealized part to do multiple what-if scenarios and you know remove holes and blends and fillets and see how it affects our analysis. We can do simple changes fast and easy and go back into uh, the FEM part with our changes to our idealized part and see these changes in real life. So I'm going to show you that uh, live with a demonstration. All right, so I have uh, just a simple connecting rod, and I'm going to go ahead and do a simple, I'll say, get your feet wet analysis of this connecting rod. So the first thing that we would like to do is uh, launch the application, and it's now called pre-post. So if you select the pre-post, this will bring you into uh, the pre-post processor known as SimCenter. 
Uh, from here, I'm going to create a new FAM and SIM. So those are those two parts uh, that I just talked about. And inside here, you'll see that I'm creating the FEM, the SIM model, and I'm associating it to my master part. So this would be a master part that I would grab from, you know, maybe my top level assembly. Maybe if I'm using uh, Team Center or some sort of data management, it's just a way that I can control and use my idealized part as my local editing instead of going ahead and messing with the uh, rod at the top level. So I'm going to create my idealized part. I'm going to use everything visible, but if I, you know, say I was using the assembly, I could go ahead and specify whatever part I wanted out of the assembly to do my FEA analysis. Right now, my solver is specified as NX Nastran. I'm going to do structural analysis. And as you can see, we can use multiple solvers uh, to go ahead and solve this, but today we're going to spend our time talking about NX Nastran. So I'll hit OK. And this is just my NASTRAN options that I can specify, so I'm going to run a Solution 101 linear statics for this analysis. If I ever needed to change, uh, you know, some bulk data case control uh, NASTRAN information, I could specify that here. Or if I wanted to run a different solution type, I could define the different solution type that I wanted. So if I wanted to run, you know, Solution 101 or uh, anything else, I could specify that. So I'm just going to keep the defaults, and we're going to run this, you know, as a simple get our feet wet model. So if you look down in my left corner, I have my simulation file view. And right now, I'm at the FEM level. But as you can see, here is the rod, which is my uh, bottom level of my assembly. So this is where my part came from. And then I created my local idealized part. And then from that, I have my FEM and SIM model. So what I'm going to do is go to my idealized part and make a simple change uh, to the model. So this just gives me uh, a warning when I pop open, you know, before I modify, I need to promote this. So that's just saying when I edit this model right here at the idealized part, I'm not actually going to mess with the uh, top level rod. So I can go ahead and do a command like idealize geometry after I promote it. Um, I'm going to do this command to idealize my geometry. And maybe I just want to do something as simple as remove the holes. If I wanted to remove blends and fillets, I could do that. I have synchronous technology, and I have the full application of NXCAD to go ahead and do that. So all I did was remove uh, the holes in the model simply and easily. But maybe I wanted to you know, make some more design changes. I could do that using the uh, simple tools built into the pre-post. But if I wanted to, I could always step out of this application and move right into modeling. And once I get into modeling, I'll have the full suite of NX to make these changes. But for this example, we're just going to do something simple as removing those blends. I mean those holes, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and step up to the FEM model. Uh, just let me know that I made a change. And let's go ahead and mesh the part. So for this example, I'm just going to throw a 3D tetrahedral mesh on it. And here's where we specify what we want to mesh. And we specify a mesh size. Now, I'm just going to give this a uniform uh, size. I'm just going to specify 2 millimeters. Um, I do have some options for my mesh, so I mesh settings, mesh quality. But you know, for this example, we'll keep it simple. And then the one thing that NXCAE or SimCenter does different than a lot of programs is it has a thing called this mesh collector. So I'm going to go ahead and right now it's automatically creating. Let's go ahead and create our own mesh collector. So inside the mesh collector is where I would define the properties, and inside that property is where I define the material. So right here is my mesh collector. I'm creating a 3D solid because I was doing a 3D tetrahedral mesh, and I'm going to create the property as a P solid. As you see, I have other options as well. And inside here, I'm going to go ahead and define my material. So I'm going to hit the choose material, and I'm going to use the material library that's built into it uh, as well. So just going to go ahead and grab steel in this example. But as you can see, this library is uh, a full list of materials. If you wanted to create your own materials, you could create your own materials on the fly. If you wanted, needed to use something other than isotropic material, you could define that here as well. So now I'm just going to accept uh, my other defaults. And I'm going to hit OK. So now when I mesh this part, it's going to be uh, that property and that material. So as you can see, the part has been meshed. If I wanted to uh, spend some more time on mesh quality, I could do that. But for, for now, we'll just keep it uh, very simple. So now that I have the part meshed and I have my 3D collector defined, 
as my solid and I have that 3D mesh inside. Let's go ahead and apply boundary conditions. So to do that, we're going to have to step up to our sim model. So inside here, let's go ahead and apply a load. And for this case, I'm going to apply a bearing load at the end of this uh, connecting rod here. And I'm going to enter a value of 1,000 newtons. And for my vector, I'm going to apply it in my minus y direction, or I can use this uh, y-axis button and make sure that I'm applying in the correct direction. As you can see right here, it is pointing in this direction. So now I have my bearing load applied to the end. Let's go ahead and apply a constraint. So for this case, let's go ahead and specify a constraint type, and let me pin the internal faces here. And as you can see, once I hit OK, it automatically created a corner system for me. In the, so I can do this uh, pin constraint based on that corner system. And the, uh, what I need to make sure that the uh, load, the, the connecting rod continues to go in this uh, minus Y sub C direction in my corner system. So I'm going to need to apply another constraint just to uh, satisfy uh, Nastran to solve this model. So let's go ahead and specify a user-defined constraint, and I'll just make sure my uh, degree of freedom 1 would be fixed so that the part doesn't move uh, this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it to, I guess, this single point right here. And all that doing is making sure that it stays in that plane. Now, inside uh, our sim model, you see I have my constraint, I have my pin constraint, so if I ever needed to go back, say my user defined constraint, and just make sure that my degree of freedom uh, 1 was fixed as I specified. So I have my boundary condition specified. Let's go ahead and solve the model. So right now I have a solution. When we set up our model, we, we define the solution, and we'll just keep that as, as default. So let's go ahead and hit our solve button. So right now it's writing information to Nastran and it's going through and solving uh, with Nastran. As you can see here, it's showing in progress. It should be completed uh, shortly. So I'm just waiting for the solution to complete. Looks like it's complete now. So let's go ahead and look at some results. So now let's go to step two, our results. And let's look at something uh, simple like our displacement. So right now I'm just showing uh, nodal displacement. And if I want to animate or do any other post-processing results, um, I'm not too sure how animation will play through uh, the webinar. But I'll, I'll press the animation button. We'll see uh, how it looks. I'm sure it won't come through as nice as it is on my end. Um, but you know, there is, you know, we can do animation. We can get information from our model as well. So. Here's just a, a simple look at our deformation, but let's go ahead and look at a, a stress plot real quick. So I'll plot Vami stress, and right now, maybe I have some, some room to give, and all these numbers are just arbitrary for this example, but maybe I had a uh, design criteria where I could, you know, maybe go up to a maximum of, we'll say, I don't know, 20 megapascals. So it looks like I'm below uh, the value that I can get. So maybe I want to try a, we'll say, a what if scenario to go ahead and maybe thin out the center section to reduce the mass, and maybe we can get closer to our optimized uh, model, if you would say. So let's go back to our model. And now let me go back to my idealized part, and let's make a simple change. So now this is one of the nice things about using a program like SimCenter is that we can make these changes on the fly fast and easy. So being able to use this uh, CAD model to make these changes and have the mesh update on the fly so we can run these situations will save you a ton of time. So this is one of the great reasons to use a uh, all-in-one program. So all I'm going to do right here is do a simple CAD change. I'm going to thin out this area by one and a half millimeters, and I'm going to do it to both sides. And as you can see, I made a simple change. If we step back up into our FEM model, I don't know how easy this is to see on your side, but if I highlight this new region, you can see that uh, my new area of mesh is, is different. And you'll see 
up here I can just update. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this update button. And automatically on the fly, my new model has been meshed based on those new parameters. So let's go ahead and see how this uh, change I made affects the model. So let's step up to the sim model again. Now one thing here, I just want to make sure that my loads and constraints uh, are still active. Sometimes you make a change and it makes a geometry change. We just need to make sure that our loads and constraints are active. So mine uh, look like they're good. So I still have the same loads and constraints, uh, boundary conditions and load. So let's go ahead and create a new solution. I could run the same solution, but I want to compare run one to run two. So I'll just right click and I will say clone. And it's just a copy of solution one. You can rename it, things like that. Um, but for our case, I uh, just want to make sure I stay on time. So let's go ahead and solve this uh, new solution. So I'll just, you can right click and say solve. And just like before, it's going to write this information to, to Nastran and uh, solve it. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to be using NX Nastran as the solver exclusively. So um, if you were using some other uh, solver in this case, you could use uh, SimCenter to, to write the deck to the solver and you could go ahead and get the results out from uh, whatever solver you're using and bring them into SimCenter if needed. So now that I got results and I'm going to go ahead and expand that and let's go ahead and look at them side by side. To me that's the best way of doing it. So let's go look at our stress case. So Von Mies stress, oh, I'm sorry, Von Mies stress and I'm going to look at them side by side. To me that's the easiest way. So Von Mies stress and then my other plot, I'm going to plot the same thing, but for my second case. Now I'll just link them up together so that when we look at them, we're looking at them at the same time. So as you can see, um, I did increase my value of stress. And, I, and say my you know value that I guessed was 20, maybe I can still make some more changes. Maybe I can hollow out down here to reduce you know, so, some area so that I can reduce some mass and maybe we can get closer to the stress value of my optimized design. So basically what we're going to do here is, you know, make some changes, do some optimized results. But as you can see, this doesn't um, really affect uh, too much of the stress value thinning out this section. So maybe, you know, we can continue to make some changes in these uh, different regions to get to an optimized result. So Hopefully I showed very easily we can make a, a simple change and see results on the fly. So maybe this is actual change that we wanted. We just go back to the designer and we could just make a simple change to the actual part because if you remember, we never actually adjusted uh, the physical top level assembly. We only adjusted our idealized part. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a mid-surface model. Um, so let's go ahead and return home. So now I also have this mid-surface bracket open, so I'm going to go ahead and open this one as well. So I just made this one the displayed in work part. So now I'm going to work on this model. So one thing to, to notice here is that I have these different regions of thicknesses, and I want to capture this model as a mid-plane representation instead of modeling this as a 3D tetrahedral mesh. Uh, the main reason why I want to do this is so that I can decrease element count and make my solution uh, time go much faster. So there's some serious benefits to being able to mid-surface parts if you can. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is just like a new Femin Sim. And just like before, I want to make sure I create my idealized part. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to use NX Nastra and I'm going to do structural analysis as well. And I'm going to create this idealized part. And just like before, I'm going to run Solution 101 and XNASTRAM. So just like we had before, we have our top level part, idealized part, our FEM part, and our SIM part. So I'm going to start in my idealized part. And just like before, it's going to let me know that I need to promote it to make changes. So I'll promote this body. And now I can go ahead and create a mid-surface of this part. Um, so this is uh, a very powerful tool. NX does a very good job of doing this. And being able to have the CAD in the background, if you ever need to, you know, manually create some of these mid-surfaces, it's, it's much easier because you can just sketch the sketch on a plane. Uh, you can move things very easily. You can use the synchronous technologies. But um, out the box, using uh, the mid-surface creation is uh, very strong. So let's go ahead and specify mid-surface by face pairs. And specify the entities that you want to mid-surface. 
And I have some different strategies, progressive. I can do it based on thickness, but I'm going to instead uh, show you a different thickness method that will do. And you can do this manually as well. So if I did this manually, I would specify, you know, a couple of these faces, one side of the other. But, you know, being able to use this progressive me method will automatically create these for me, and um, it'll save me some time in the long run. So I'm going to specify it. And you can click through, and you can visually see, you know, the mid-surface that it created. Um, I don't know how well this is transferring through the, the GoToMeeting, I, the webinar here, but, you know, they, they make logical sense to me, and this is how I would do it on the fly if I would be doing this uh, progressively. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide this solid body upon completion so we can look at this mid-surface representation. So as you can see, it mid-surfaced the model uh, very easily, uh, not too much effort here. So let's go ahead and step up to the FEM model, and let's go ahead and throw a mesh on here. Now, as you can see, we still have the solid model. All we have to do is hide uh, the geometry, and we'll just start with our uh, mid-plane representation. So one thing that I recommend doing uh, for a part that you're doing mid-surface representation is to stitch the edges together. So what this command stitch edge does is it combines the edges together so that geometrically there is not a free edge between uh, these two regions. So when we go ahead and mesh it, we don't have to make sure that we have the same number of nodes along a curve. We're not going to have zipper meshes. We're going to get a nice clean mesh, and we're not going to have to do uh, size on curve to make sure you know one node matches to another side. So let's go ahead and mesh it, and we can, and we can show that. So let's go ahead and we'll throw a 2D mesh this time. Just like before, I'm going to create a mesh collector, create a thin shell. I'm going to create a P shell, as you can see this time. And inside here, I'm going to define my material. Uh, I'm going to use steel again. And right here is the thickness. So if I wanted to define the thickness of this, prop of this uh, P shell, as you can see, the uh, the structure varied in thickness throughout, so I don't want to just specify one thickness for the entire part. I'm going to go ahead and vary this uh, thickness. So I'll just leave it as blank for now. Set my property. I'm going to specify these objects to be meshed. And I'm going to go ahead and specify a size, I guess one millimeter will work. So now that the, the part has been meshed, it's a good idea to do some, some simple checks. Uh, so, you know, the duplicate, let's see if there's any duplicate nodes. So just like before, I'll go ahead and try to highlight everything in the model. I guess I missed a little bit over there. And I'll just hit list nodes, and you'll see no duplicate nodes found. So using that simple stitch command, I save myself a ton of time sizing curves and making sure mesh aligns. So this will save you some time in the long run. Um, another check that people like to do is just go ahead and see element edges. Maybe I want to see the free edges of the model, so I can just uh, generate element outlines. And now it uh, might be hard to see on your side, but it's showing an element outline of my entities. If I, you know, say I hid these other uh, surfaces and elements, you'll be able to see this element outline. All right. So now that it is meshed, now I want to make sure that I view the thickness and make sure that I captured the thickness of those regions correctly, because right now I haven't done anything to do that. So what we can do is select the mesh, and we can edit this associative data. And inside here is where I can figure out my thickness source. So I have options to do it at the mid-surface. So since we did the mid-surface using this program, it remembers these values. So we'll go ahead and we'll get it from our mid-surface. And we'll do an evaluation at every node. We, we can do it at an element centroid or an average feature thickness. But let's go ahead and capture uh, that thickness value at every node. So now it's, it's hard to visually see you know, what changes have been made. So something as simple as uh, you know, right-clicking at that collector level, we can plot thickness contours. So I can visually see the model as a fringe plot. 
So this might be a, a nice simple check that you know maybe you want to see the varying thickness throughout this uh, base surface as I specified. So as you can see, we captured the, the different thicknesses. So let's go ahead and step up to our sim model. And just like before, let's go ahead and apply some loads and constraints. This model, I'm just going to go ahead and fix it around these holes. If I wanted to uh, do a more complex constraint, I could go ahead and create rigid connections and things like that. But uh, just for simplicity and time constraints, let's go ahead and uh, just do a simple uh, constraint here. Now, one of the things is, as you saw, I clicked on each one, but I could use some of these filter methods inside NX to go ahead and you know, make my selection e easier, maybe use some circular edges and uh, maybe if I had circular faces and, you know, other ways that I can filter through this uh, model. So using these NX tools will help you save some time as well. So now that I have those holes fixed, let's go ahead and apply a load. And I'm just going to do a force. And I'm going to specify it on these two holes. And I'll specify a value of 100 newtons. And I'm going to define that vector in my uh, Z direction. Now, it might be hard to visually see what the force is doing, so just, just for my sake here, let's go ahead and edit my display, and let's show it as a collapse. Okay, so now I can see that I am applying uh, that load in this direction of 100 newtons with the constraint at the bottom. So now that I have my uh, boundary conditions, I have my thickness defined, I have my material and property, let's go ahead and solve the model. So I already have the solution set up from the beginning, so let's go ahead and hit the Solve button. So the solution's being uh, sent to NASTRAN. NASTRAN's being run in the background. Um, should be done in a minute. There we go. So I got a uh, solution completed. And let's go ahead and look at the results. Now I still have my results loaded from my previous run, so let's just get them out of the way. And let's look at something simple. Let's go look at our stress value uh, for the structure. Now, this is a exaggerated deform plot. If I didn't want to look at exaggeration, I could change it as well. But just like before, if it, let's let's go ahead and let's find some change. Now, just based on this, this region gets thinner as it climbs up. So let's go ahead and thicken up this region where it's being deformed the most and it looks like the most stress is being occurred. So let's go ahead and step back to our model. And let's go back to our idealized part. So now we're at the idealized part. Let's go ahead and thicken one region really quick and, and see these changes happen live. So we can watch that we don't have to define that thickness again. The thickness is already coming from the mid-surface. So let's go ahead and show uh, the part that I hid. And let's go ahead and thicken this region over here, which just seems to be taking a decent amount of that load. So let's go ahead and do a replace face. So I want to replace this face with this face. You see it makes that change. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I want to replace this face with this face with this face. And now I have this little region that uh, I want to clean up. It doesn't look the best, so I want to replace that face with the fillet. And now I get this uh, nice smooth region, and I'll do it to the other side as well. All right. So now I, I made a change to my uh, idealized part. And as you can see, it, based on model history, that the promoted body, which is our original body, is before this uh, mid-surface representation. So now when I go ahead and step back into our fem part, it's going to let me know that something has changed. And I can go ahead and view, just like before, I can plot my thickness and contours. And you'll see that... Uh, this change has been made. So now that whole region now is one steady thick thickness. And I didn't have to make any other changes. NX knew all these results. And this saves me a ton of time. Just imagine if you had to make another change and you had to re-mid-surface it, re-mesh it, 
create new properties, new materials, all those things. Uh, I didn't have to do any of that. I just, you know, used the program's uh, ability to capture all that information, reference to the CAD geometry, and we can make this change really easy. So let's back, back up to our SIM model. Just like before, let's clone our solution. And let's go ahead and solve that and look at, let's look at results. So I sent the uh, information to Nastran to solve. Should be done here in a minute. It's not quite a minute. There we go. Got some results. And just like before, it, it makes the most sense to me to go ahead and uh, plot these results uh, side by side. So let's go ahead, just like before, plot Bobby stress. Let's give it a screen. So this is our original case. And then we'll plot case two next to it. And we'll plot them with the same plot. And just like before, let's go ahead and link these together so uh, they move together. But as you can see, just based on you know scale alone, just making that simple change, uh, there we go. Making that simple change drastically reduced you know the model. As you can see, our output looks very similar, but our our stress values have you know dropped in half just by making that simple change. So if this would be an area of concern, maybe it's uh, maybe instead of looking at stress, we're looking at deflection. It's deflecting too much, and you just need to you know decrease uh, that deflection by a value, we can just make these simple what if cases and, and check these results and it, you can save yourself a ton of time uh, using uh, SimCenter 3D here. So so that's the demonstration that I wanted to give. I hope I showed that there was some uh, very powerful stuff in SimCenter 3D to create models. Um, I know we only had a certain amount of time so if anybody has any questions after you know this webinar and wants to you know maybe go over some things F feel free to reach out to me my contact information was at the beginning um, so here is a quick uh, summary so uh, you know what what is SimCenter 3D so SimCenter 3D I hope I showed that it's an interactive CAE package that is built within the NX environment so there is uh, some very powerful tools in there so I hope I showed you, you know doing that simple 3D model that using that CAD associativity can save you a ton of time and I also think I showed you that in that mid-surface representation so being able to have that top level CAD model and being able to create this idealized part through your what-if scenarios and do multiple cases very fast and easy uh, there's a lot of powerful in that powerful uses in that uh, software there so uh, that's all I wanted to talk about today um, I want to say thank you for your time and I don't know if Andy has anything else that he wants to mention, but we can uh, answer some, we can go over some questions if you guys have some. Great. Thanks, Dan. That was a very concise and, and uh, excellent demo, I may say. But uh, now's the time. If you have any questions at all, please go ahead and type them into the Q&A panel, and Dan will address them uh, at this moment. And while we're waiting for the questions to come in, I do remind, I want to remind uh, the audience that when you log off, um, a survey is going to pop up. Just please take a couple of minutes to fill that out. That will help us a lot in the future. Um, one other thing that I want to ask, uh, Daniel, is what type of configuration is, is, do you have as far as computers go? It looked like you're, you, you were solving those, those uh, you know, uh, problem pretty quickly there. Uh, yeah, I'm just using a normal Dell laptop. I think I have 32 gigs of RAM, so I do have a decently powered uh, box, but it, it is just a, a simple Dell laptop. Uh, nothing too crazy. I think it has a i5 core, but I do have a decent amount of RAM, but Nastran really uh, takes advantage of the speed of the hard drive, and I actually do have an SSD drive, so that also helps increase in time. So if you are running Nastran jobs, uh, the the speed of the hard drive is one of the most important things you can do. So if you can get yourself an SSD drive just to run your NAS trans scratch, you can save yourself a ton of time. All right, and and the other thing that I want to mention, Daniel, is is uh, let's say someone is is not using simulation at all or CA at all in part of their process. What's what's the the best approach to to get that incorporated into what they're doing? 
it, it's just a, a great way to, you know, like I was showing, you know, what if scenarios. So if at this case, if you, you know, say you're just doing hand calcs and you have your part and you want to see what will happen, you know, in the long run, you could save yourself a ton of time. Maybe you're using way too much material. Maybe you can make it out of something else. So using, you know, just simulation can save yourself a lot of, you know, your company a lot of money and yourself a lot of time uh, just trying different scenarios instead of trying to create, you know, prototypes and testing them physically, we can just create, you know, prototypes and test them, you know, in CAE before you go ahead and say create this part. Yeah, yeah. What what Daniel showed you there was the, the integration between design and simulation. So if, if you have not yet used simulation as part of your process in, in you know, um, designing and manufacturing product, we highly recommend that you you, you look into it. And um, you know we are more than, more than happy to be able to help you. So please contact any one of us at Ceratech or contact your uh, Ceratech account manager if you're working with one of them already. Uh, we can sit down and kind of walk you through what needs to take place. Um, uh, again, I just want to point out that we just barely show the top of the surface of SimCenter 3D. This is just one portion of a vast amount of capabilities um, that this product has. So um, more questions, and if you're too shy to ask it here, feel free to uh, email us or call us, and we'll be able to help you at any time. Um, with that, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Daniel, for a great demo. And um, we hope to see you again on a future webcast. Thanks, everybody.